Welcome to Potential Props, Inc. Here you will find props made from redesigned and modified found objects, which may have unique shapes and characteristics. Many times, the found item can be used as the catalyst to create one-of-a-kind devices using inventive ideas, novel approaches, and creative thinking. This website will cover most of my builds using my ink technique. Welcome back to another video from Potential Props. I'm currently working on trying to find a, a location for two micro switches that will stop the motor when it reaches the upper and lower travel. So when the worm gear turns, it moves the, the centerpiece downward, okay, and there'll have to be a micro switch somewhere in the bottom portion uh, of the internal mechanism here, and then when it rotates going up, the same thing applies at the top, okay, because it only travels so far, but you have to shut the motors off so they don't continue to run and, and burn the motors out. So I figured out where to put the switch on the bottom and this is what the switch looks like here it's a tiny little micro switch it's a single pole double throw micro switch there's going to be two of these and they have to be placed somewhere within this piece so that it doesn't interfere with the body so basically it can't be any taller than this section can't stick out anywhere above here or here okay so that it can actually slide into the body otherwise it'll be sticking out and it won't uh, it won't be able to be put you know back inside like this so if you look at it, it it there's no room above and below right here is a piece of brass and a screw Now this piece of brass right here and this screw, there's going to be two of these, okay? One of them is, is to show me where the location is when it's down all the way. So let me go all the way down, okay? So that's down all the way and so it stops right here. The other one, the other brass piece and screw will be in this hole right here, okay? So there's a hole and what that does is it holds this piece in place. So when this is in the home position, it's down here, and then when it travels up about, oh, maybe an inch and a half, uh, it has to make the micro switch at the top. So what I'm going to do is I found a, a place right here, this, uh, this location right in here, this little area that's kind of a square, you know, with a wall here, here, and all the way around. The switch is going to lay right here, but below the level of this area right here okay so to show you that let me uh, grab the micro uh, what's going to happen is it's going to sink down slightly below the level let me go ahead and re-grab it here sorry about this okay so the switch is going to lay right in here just like that okay so I machined away or dremeled away some of the plastic so that this is allowed to drop in flush okay so that's actually laying in there let me go ahead and set that back in there again and as you can see the brass piece is hitting the little lever on the micro switch so let me set it back in there and it's gonna set flush just like that inside there okay and in order to hold that there what I'm going to do is add a piece of styrene like this, okay? So this micro switch will be glued right here, right in the corner of this piece of styrene. Just about like that, okay? Just in the upper right corner. And when it's all ready to go and when the wires have been soldered to the terminals, it's then going to be laid right here back in place, just like that. So that'll hold the micro switch in place so that when this brass and screw come down, it, it makes that switch and, and of course will stop it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder up the wires on the little micros here and then uh, go ahead and, and do all the gluing and then I'll get back to you with uh, further improvements. Okay, 
I went ahead and soldered the wires onto the switch and it's um, the way the switch works is there's a uh, let me uh, go ahead and come up here and show you the way this switch works is that there's three legs one of them is common the other one is normally open and the third one would be normally closed so when there is nothing pressing on the switch and in this particular case this shaft right here is pressing on the switch right now because it, this is in the down position all the way so when this is not pressing on the switch I need to have the motor wired in the normally closed so that as long as the shaft is anywhere in between and not touching any one of the switches the one here or the one that's going to be located somewhere in the top it's allowed to run both directions okay so that would mean it's a normally closed switch then when it reaches one of the switches let's say this one here and it presses against it it will open the normally closed and turn it into an, uh, an open okay so that stops the motor so the switch comes down uh, or the motor comes down the shaft hits the switch and opens the the contact and of course it stops the motor the trick is is as long as this shaft is resting against the motor it can't go back the other way so even if I reverse the polarity it's sitting against a switch and it won't allow it to go back the other way because the switch is now open so in order to get it to go off the switch to come off the switch and start back in the other direction you need to put a diode and what you do is you put a, a, a diode so that when you reverse the polarity it allows the motor to run only for that instant to get it off of the switch once it's off the switch and moving in this direction the diodes no longer in the circuit and it will run up to the other end and do the same thing so it's it does the same function at the bottom or the the top so anyway so I went ahead and mounted the switch here okay that's where it's going to sit it's a little black switch I don't know if you can kinda of see it has two little holes three contacts three wires a yellow green and a blue and I cut a little slot right here uh, to allow the wires to come out okay so what I'm going to do is make electrical contact to that and then I'm going to put this piece of styrene uh, eventually will be actually glued in this location right here okay uh, just like that so that it holds the switch in place and then uh, I'll find another uh, a location up here for the other switch so there we go so far all right so I'm going to go ahead and glue that switch in place and get it uh, locked in there and then I'm going to find a location for the second switch which is uh, this little one right here so I haven't quite done that yet but uh, hopefully I'll be able to come up with a, a location the thing is um, this shaft when it goes all the way to the other end all the way up let me rotate it here okay it stops about right here so the little brass piece that's going to go in here the brass and and screw like this one right here is gonna go in this hole and it'll stop about right here because there's a a, a, a little wall right here that it can't go any further so I may end up putting the switch it's possible I, I'm not sure I haven't checked it out yet but maybe I'll put the switch just to the outside so maybe it'll be mounted right here uh, possibly we'll see I'll have to maybe cut that wall away and then put this switch back in its place so that's might be actually what I'm going to do so uh, put that there and add another little wall or uh, maybe a, a plate so that this switch could be uh, attached to it so that's a possibility all right I'll get back to you and see if that's what I ended up doing okay I found the location for the upper switch as I mentioned earlier the bottom switch is going to go uh, in this location right here okay and I've already adhered it to a piece of styrene uh, as you can see and the wires are already soldered so that's that's setting up right now now as far as the upper switch I was going to put it in, let me show you here uh, let me focus I was going to remove some plastic in this location right here where it there's kind of like a bridge that goes across right here well I couldn't do that because that would uh, cause the the two pieces on either side to be very flimsy so I ended up just machining some of it away and mounting the switch right here okay so basically when this shaft moves up it will make 
and break the switch right here. Okay, so right now it's uh, uh, being glued and it's uh, it's it's stuck there pretty good, and so it'll make and break the switch as it goes up and then and down to the the switch that's going to be down here. So so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and let the uh, the glue set up, uh, you know, for a few hours, and then uh, I'll get back on it and then start putting down the wires so that they're just not all over the place. I'm going to go ahead and do a continuity check. Right now I have a meter that's connected to the two uh, wires here for the uh, normally closed position. So let me hook that up. Okay, so there's a tone going off right now and it's telling me that the switch is now closed. It's a normally closed switch. So as soon as the uh, I rotate the uh, worm gear here and this shaft moves up to the top, it should stop the tone. Okay, so right there is as far as the shaft will go and at that point the motor shuts off and it'll just sit there until I let go of the switch and then it'll go back down, remake the switch and then go all the way back to the other side. So basically as I rotate the the worm gear let me turn the ro ro rotate the, the the shaft will move up and then open the switch just like that down up down up okay you can see right there where the the uh, portion in the middle is moving up and down so there's down and then I rotate the shaft and it goes up and stops the motor okay so that's so far so good I wanted to update you a little bit on the current status of the electronics of the ham prop here. It's all been wired. All the little micro switches have been put into place. You can see one of them right there. And basically the two rods right here that stick up will hold the top piece that which will move back and forth. So right now it has batteries in it. You can see that thing, you know, jumps forward when I press the button on the side. And the button is in the same location that the original one was uh, for the top when it was removable. Okay, so all I have to do is press the button. That moves forward. It'll do its scan job and then let go and it returns. Now, when I press the button, there's going to be an LED uh, which will light up in the front piece here. Now, I machined a piece of uh, acrylic here. This is a uh, tinted blue acrylic and there's two five millimeter blue LEDs on either end. So I'm going to go ahead and power that up here for you. And basically it'll glow blue just like that. Okay, let me uh, refocus here. And there you go. You can kind of see how uh, the ridges in there kind of accentuate the, uh, the look a little bit. And the uh, blue LEDs uh, on either end, you can kind of see the hot spots, one here and one there. There's going to be a silver band right around the ends here so that uh, it will hide the hot spots and just show what the effect uh, is of the LEDs there in the center. So, uh, so far that's uh, how we are looking up to this point. And uh, I guess I'll get back to you when uh, I get a little further along. I wanted to show you how this looks outside of the uh, the case here, the cover here. Uh, it's basically, like I say, just a piece of transparent uh, acrylic that's tinted blue, and there's uh, two five millimeter LEDs uh, pinched in the middle there. So I I've drilled out for the five millimeter and then put the LEDs in place. So eventually that will all be wired in to the power switch of the uh, the motor here. So and basically the power when it goes to the motor shuts off but it will remain on the uh, blue LED scanning uh, section there.